Hey everyone and welcome to today's WordStream webinar, everything you need to know about the recently announced AdWords changes. My name is Chris and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. Following our presentation, you'll receive an email with today's recording and slides. We'll also save some time at the end of the webinar for a Q&A, um, so make sure you stick, stay on the line and uh, send us your questions in. For those who for those of you who aren't familiar with WordStream, we're a search marketing software provider with free and paid tools to help you easily grow your AdWords and Bing campaigns. So if you're looking to master paid search, check out PPC, PPC University at www.wordstream.com slash learn. And we also encourage you to be social throughout the presentation and join the conversation with us on Twitter. You can use the hashtag PPC Life and follow at WordStream and also at Larry Kim. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I can take it from here. Uh, this is Larry Kim. I'm the founder of WordStream, and I thought uh, just to mix things up a little bit, uh, I usually just have a like a one quick intro slide. I thought uh, I would just instead uh, do kind of three random facts about, about myself, just to introduce myself today. Um, so uh, starting with number one, uh, if you were to find an internet marketing article on the web that mentioned either unicorns or quality score, there's a very, very good chance that I was the author because I'm slightly into those uh, things. Uh, number two, um, I have a, like a, a kid. Uh, he's a Julian. It's like a one-year-old one kid. He just turned one uh, this week, actually. And it's been a really fun uh, uh, you know, year just trying to hang out with this dude. Uh, and then my third random fact about myself, I'm, I'm from Winnipeg, Canada, which is kind of very famous uh, for being colder than Mars for much of the year. Um, Uh, just going back and forth from home. Actually, I'm just joking. That's from uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, <laughs> seriously, though, um, Boston a, is a really special place for me because um, uh, it's where I started WordStream about six years ago. Uh, you know, initially, um, you know, working all by all by myself uh, in in a, in a Panera Bread, taking advantage of the free Wi-Fi. Um, but I was back in 2008. I actually got married in 2008, and you can imagine. My in-laws weren't too excited about uh, the idea of their daughter marrying some guy who worked out of a Panera Bread, uh, but thankfully we were able to um, kind of upgrade. And now today we're, we've got you know three floors near the Prudential Building uh, um, in Boston, and uh, you know, about 150 people managing uh, a couple hundred million dollars of spend across thousands of small business accounts. Uh, so enough about me and uh, you know just trying to be a little jokey here. Uh, we can uh, get back to the details, uh, which is um, kind of the, this uh, big AdWords changes and, and new features and functions that are coming. Uh, so basically, uh, once once a year, uh, Google does this thing called the AdWords Performance Forum. Uh, it's for uh, it's, a, it's a really important event where they kind of pre-announce some of the major initiatives uh, that they're working on uh, for, throughout the rest of the year. So they, they talk about the, the various features and functions uh, that that you know are either available now or will be released shortly. You know within the next 12 months, uh, made available to other people. And you know uh, thankfully. Um, we were very fortunate to, to to get an invite to this event. Uh, we were uh, I was about one of a hundred people invited to the event, and you might not recognize any pe of these people on the screens, but these are kind of like big heroes for me. It's like the, you know, Paul is the director of, of AdWords product management. Um, Jerry is is the VP of AdWords, and that that Asian guy uh, with the big smile that's me. Uh, so so I was able to go to this event today, and what I'm going to be doing today is just sharing you some of what I believe to be the key takeaways of of, of um, some of the things that were announced, uh, and also giving some commentary about kind of you know our thoughts about what it means and 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 um, you know the implications of these changes uh, just just uh, uh, as commentary. Um, you know, before getting into all the details of all the announcements and everything uh, that was was uh, announced this week, I thought uh, we'd just take your temperature here uh, in terms of uh, you know your sentiment. Like, how are you feeling about all these new new changes in AdWords? Like, 
uh, you know, on one hand, I can imagine a lot of people could be very, very excited about it uh, and, and wanting to, to try out every one of them. Uh, on the other hand, you might be nervous because, uh, you know, it's it, honestly, it's very difficult to keep up with, with so many changes. Uh, and then, uh, you know, no opinion just means like, you know, maybe you haven't decided yet. Uh, so, Chris, uh, can you tell us a little bit about like, how that's working out there? Sure. It looks like a majority of people have locked in their vote here so let me uh, let me read off the results so it looks like 19% they're excited can't wait to try them out 32% nervous it's hard to keep up with so many changes and 49% no opinion haven't yet decided how I feel about it so 1932 and what was the last one 49 49 okay uh, wow, so nervous it beats out excited by almost a 1.5 to 1 margin. That's uh, very interesting, uh, although not terribly unexpected because it, it can be a, a lot of work. Um, all right, so that's how we feel about it. Let's go back to the show here. Everything you need to know about the new AdWords changes um, on my agenda today, we'll be talking about this new concept or this new buzzword called micro moments. Um, don't laugh, that's actually what they're calling it, um, and, and we'll be talking about that in detail. Uh, we'll, we'll do a complete kind of overview of all the new features and functions that were announced, and then uh, talk a little bit about some of the significance and, and uh, key takeaways. Uh, so starting with uh, micro moments, and what the heck is this new buzzword? So uh, during the presentations, the various presentations uh, you know, this week, um, that this term, micro moments, was mentioned prominently by uh, you know, all of the speakers, you know, over a hundred times, and I thought it would make sense to first kind of describe what the heck they're talking about by these micro moments. Uh, make no mistake, it's just a marketing buzzword, but you know, what what they're trying to say here is 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 it's, it's kind of significant. Uh, for starters, um, they announced, um, you know, uh, for the first time ever, uh, they've confirmed that. Uh, more Google searches are happening on mobile devices than on desktop uh, in 10 countries, including the United States, Canada, and Japan. Uh, and so, so uh, you know, we've been calling this for years that, you know, mobile is going to overtake desktop. Well, uh, it was pretty significant. Uh, Google confirmed that that is in, indeed the case as of now. Uh, and so, regarding that mobile traffic, that mobile searches uh, that's happening, that's happening more than 50% of the searches, uh, there's an interesting uh, kind of um, uh, element of the searches, and that is that those searches are actually, 91% of these searches are actually people just using their smartphone to search for something while in the middle of doing something else. Uh, so you're, you're doing some other task, like you know having lunch or, or, or driving somewhere or whatever, uh, and, and you kind of instinctively turn to your mobile device to, to you know, learn something or to, to do something or to buy something. And so what, what they're saying is that this new concept of this, this digital reflex called a, a micro moment, uh, they're happening billions of times every day on search, on display ads, uh, as well as on YouTube. And um, the, the, the key takeaway here is uh, they believe that uh, marketers who put the kind of, to think about all these uh, micro moments that are happening all over the world, and you know, the, the, the moments of decision making and preference making, those marketers who can kind of put those micro moments at the center of their their marketing strategy and address that those consumer needs with relevant ads and product offerings will win big. And so uh, the key takeaway here is that businesses absolutely need to be thinking about pivoting their uh, AdWords uh, marketing campaign strategies uh, to meet the all these uh, needs of, of consumers searching kind of whimsically on their phones with immediacy and relevant ads in the moments that matter, particularly on these uh, mobile devices. And so uh, the, the, the key areas of focus in terms of all the new features that were uh, were announced, uh, they, they, they kind of fall into three areas of focus, all tied together by mobile, of course. Uh, the first has to do with uh, new mobile ad experiences, uh, so uh, new ad formats. Uh, uh, secondly, um, there's a, a bunch of new scale and automation tools to make it easier to uh, build and, 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 cre and create AdWords campaigns, uh, you know, to capture all this mobile interest. Uh, and finally, uh, there's new uh, attribution and measurement tools to, to kind of uh, make sense of the value of these mobile clicks that we're paying for. Um, so, 
So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about uh, number one, which is the new mobile ad uh, ad formats. Uh, pretty exciting stuff here, guys. Um, just a random fact here: fifty percent of car and automotive searches happen on mobile. So this is like one of the big, one, you know, one of the biggest cons consumer purchases that people typically make, uh, like up there, top two kind of thing. Uh, and half of those searches happen on mobile, and and uh, and basically. Uh, when people do this, these searches, I think they want to, they want to get you know information like images of the cars they're searching for, uh, and and when they're ready to buy, I think they would like to have uh, you know next steps of of like being able to call a dealership, or or get directions to a dealership directly from their mobile device. So this is stuff that used to happen on desktop, uh, and it's now all happening on mobile, and so. Um, on the left here, you can kind of see the old uh, uh, kind of automotive uh, ad format. And, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. It has some site links and a lot of information there, but it, I wouldn't say it's that inspiring. It's not. It's it's no uh, nowhere close to a, a car showroom uh, mobile experience. Uh, and so uh, the new the new format is actually on the right side, and it's it's a lot better in a lot of ways. Um, let's talk about that. Uh, uh, the, the the image, for example, it's it's an image carousel, so you can kind of swipe from from left to right and 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 um, see you know multiple product shots uh, of this. Uh, in this case, it's a Dodge Challenger, uh, and I think by having all these images, it's much more likely to inspire action from consumers, as as well as uh, you're much as a consumer, you're much more likely to to take relevant actions, uh, such as um, you know talking to you know. The taking directions or calling the dealer directly from the search results uh, for, for, for directly from the ad there, and so I think that's really important if you're you're an automotive dealer, um, you know, and, and uh, you're looking to, to kind of differentiate yourself from all the others. Uh, definitely, um, this is, is very very important and much better than before. You absolutely kind of need to try this out right away. Um, so moving away from the automotive industry, and 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 there's a lot of new ad formats here that we'll be talking about, like. Uh, but but travel industry was was another one that came up. Uh, so you know people searching for hotels. Um, you know here's a, here's an interesting fact. Uh, they they share that 69% uh, of the of travel research is actually performed while uh, while waiting or commuting. Uh, and and during this research phase, uh, consumers are largely undecided about what brand to book, uh, which means they're open to buying you know whatever shows up in the search listings. And that's tremendous uh, opportunity here for marketers uh, that are that are trying to capture this kind of uh, these moments uh, of of purchase intent. And so. Uh, you know, if you're your hotel uh, operator, uh, you know there's, um, there's some fantastic new ad formats for um, mobile uh, hotel shopping experiences. I think uh, what people people would like to know is um, they'd want to see access to the like, like the the location, the price, reviews, um, and and uh, and this new uh, mobile ad format. Gets, gives you all the information that you you need to, to do this kind of commerce activity directly from a Google search. Uh, you can even uh, you, you can even book uh, online by clicking uh, the the click to book button. So that's pretty amazing. Um, uh, again, if you're if if this is your industry, uh, you absolutely need to be using these because it's just such a game changer. Um, now, travel and, and automotive are, are big, but uh, when it comes to like what's the biggest industry, uh, it's, it's definitely shopping uh, by a long shot. And, and, uh, and in general, the, the growth in, in shopping searches, so queries related to shopping for products online uh, uh, on mobile has grown by 175% uh, in just the first five months of this year alone of 2015. So that's very impressive growth in, in, in uh, shopping queries, and um, you know, previously Google had you know some some support for um, you know Google, uh, Google shopping ads. You know, there you can see kind of the Angry Birds uh, stuffed animals on the left. Uh, they've significantly uh, upgraded uh, this ad format with something called local inventory ads, uh, and so it's kind of hard to see in the screenshot. It's a little grainy, but we, what I'm trying to point to there is it says uh, someone's doing a, sh a search for like a, a dish, uh, sorry, a, a, a dryer, uh, and and uh, at the bottom there it says in stock nearby at Sears outlet so that's like 
ridiculously powerful because it allows people to not just search for, for products, but but then be, go go into stores and actually buy them. Uh, and and I think that's um, very very interesting. And and uh, again, something if you're in the retail business, you absolutely have to have to try out. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, in addition to these uh, local inventory ads, uh, they've kind of done a lot of expansion on the um, the the ad format for for shopping. Um, basically, uh, for for the various products, uh, they now feature a expandable product card. And the product card is going to have a ton of information that's relevant to um, to purchasers, including reviews. Um, all of the detailed product information, uh, and, and, and um, I think it's, it's, it's everything you need to, to know here, um, but, but in a mobile format. Um, so beyond um, shopping, um, you know, what about uh, finance? So uh, they're, they're seeing equally impressive growth in, in mobile searches pertaining to finance, so mortgages, credit cards, insurance, etc. And they've got a ton of new formats here uh, to talk about. Um, one of them is, is, is very interesting. It has to do with comparing and buying insurance online. And so again, you see the kind of the expandable product card, the ability to, to, to view the detailed reviews, uh, as well as the ability to call an agent directly from the search results page. So this is pretty powerful stuff, you know, all from within the Google search page. And, and I think if, if you're an insurance broker, uh, this is, you absolutely have to be here. Um, what about getting a, signing up for a credit card? Uh, so again, it's just so easy to uh, compare rates uh, for for different credit cards, and and, and you can apply. Uh, previously, this was was available to, to just a couple of big brands, uh, national brands, but now uh, they're they're making it available for, for for regional banks as well. So so you can uh, use use these ad formats, um, and and it's not limited to, to just credit cards. You can even shop for a mortgage. You know, compare the latest rates, get detailed information. On, um, on on different lenders uh, and uh, and apply for mortgages uh, directly from a mobile phone and then this is um, this is I think this is a game changer so um, I think um, uh, like even though all of the the ad formats that were discussed were in, in very specific industries like automotive you know travel finance uh, shopping um, you know, one question that comes to mind uh, is like, what if I'm not in one of these industries? Uh, so the answer is, I think, um, what I would expect to see from Google. I actually, um, I actually asked uh, Jerry Dishler this question: like, well, are we just going to have a, a, a zillion different ad formats, one for every every um, uh, every industry? And what he told me was uh, that uh, basically his expectation is that they would come up with uh, kind of custom Customized ad experiences for kind of the top 10 or top 20, uh, you know, different uh, in industries, and, and so this is just a study that I did a couple years ago, uh, talking as this like 2011 Google's revenues. But what were the biggest uh, money makers in terms of verticals? And, and you can see like jobs in education, home and garden, vehicles. Like these are some of the top industries. So so. I would expect to see kind of customized ad formats for at least these top 10 or top 20 uh, um, industries, like in in the in the near future. Uh, but then he said for all the other um, industries that kind of don't fall into the top 10 or 20 industries, uh, he, you could expect to see some kind of generic, um, you know, you know uh, mobile uh, ad format that that wasn't uh, that was a little bit more customizable that you could use. For more general purposes, like so, if you're selling software or whatever, uh, that, that that's what that would work. Uh, so that's and enough about the the new ad formats. I think it's very exciting. Uh, you know. I think there's this notion of people thinking that um, you, you know you're not going to you're not going to do serious commerce transactions on your phones, but uh, the data is proving everyone wrong, and people are more and more comfortable uh, transacting and, and doing uh, actual tasks uh, on their phones, and so these new uh, responsive mobile ad, ad templates are, are very key in, in helping people um, you know uh, capture more of that value. Uh, so, so the second class of, of new features and functions that were announced today have to do with uh, new PPC automation tools, um, right? Because uh, uh, you know we need we need to 
to build out all these new campaigns, but we don't have all day to do it. So uh, we need we need to leverage tools to automate some of this work. And and so one of the new data points that, that was shared with us uh, this week was that 15% of searches on Google are unique and have never been searched on before. Uh, and so uh, that's problematic because. Um, you know, in keyword search, you have to kind of anticipate what what are the keywords that people are searching for, and if if they're not like if if they've never been seen before, it's very very difficult to predict them, right? Uh, and so, uh, what was announced was a complete redesign of of an existing product that that. Uh, that didn't have that much traction prior, but it's it's they, they've done a complete overhaul of this this tool. It's called dynamic search ads. So what what the heck is a dynamic search ad? A dynamic search ad is a powerful tool that lets uh, advertisers target relevant keyword searches uh, based on the website content, on, like so, so the pages of your website, without having any need to manage keywords. So how this works is that Google uses their organic web crawling technology okay it, it crawls your website all the pages of your websites and tries to figure out what keywords are relevant to what pages uh, on your site it then automatically optimizes kind of creates these new ad headlines and descriptions and also figures out what landing page to send people to uh, depending on what keywords they're searching for uh, and so Currently, uh, it, it's kind of a it's complementary to keyword targeting. So they're saying that this complements your existing campaigns by helping you find new keyword searches that might not be covered by your current keyword selection. Um, but I definitely can see how uh, you know that that could become uh, much more powerful, uh, maybe even leading us to a future without keywords. Uh, but uh, in any case. Uh, what you can see here in this screen here is is kind of the new redesigned uh, dynamic search ad interface, and and basically it it scrapes your website, and, and um, not only does it scrape your website, it then categorizes the pages on your sites into specific uh, groupings. So like furniture, bedroom furniture, living room furniture, chairs, uh, and and that's really powerful. And what you can do then is select the the groupings of, of, of pages that you want to send traffic to. Uh, so, so maybe I want to advertise my dining chairs or something. It tells me uh, sort of the, the, the website coverage, the suggested cost per click, um, and and uh, it, it's 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 that powerful. It's going to then automatically write ads. Uh, it's going to pick keywords and send traffic to the right pages. Uh, and it just takes you know five or ten minutes to set up. So this is uh, I think um, very interesting. Another uh, kind of new tool that they've added here has to do with providing more transparency. So uh, for each of the recommended categories, um, you know you can, you can kind of see exactly what is the page that they're going to send you to, and what would that ad actually look like. And so you know overall, I think uh, this is a very big development, uh, actually pretty huge, uh, and, and they're saying that it's going to be available globally uh, in, in the next few months. Um, so moving along here, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Google Display Network. Uh, so the Google Display Network, uh, I love this thing. Uh, it's, it's For people who are not familiar with the Google Display Network, like when you do a, when you're just search, uh, when you're browsing the internet, so like here I'm just looking at boston.com's homepage, those banners that show up, so the Blue Hills Bank and uh, I don't even know what that is. Creative playthings on the bottom uh, there. The, those banner ads, even though I'm on Boston.com, those are being served by the Google Display Network. And so, um, uh, what you might not know is that when you do display ads, is uh, that you need to have ads in all of the different formats. So there's so many different formats, and if you like. Each ad auction for each different ad format is completely different from 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 the other. Like you can't, if you have a square ad, banner ad, it's not eligible to show up uh, in, in a rectangular uh, banner ad auction. And so uh, previously, it was getting a little bit ridiculous uh, because there were like 51 different ad formats on the Google Display Network. And the and the reason for the recent pr proliferation of these ad formats have to do with all these mobile devices like tablets and 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 and, and smart phones where uh, they have so many different screen sizes and so they have to come up with so many different uh, image sizes uh, in order to advertise um, 
on the Google Display Network. And the problem was, if you didn't have the ad format, uh, you know, then then um, you weren't eligible to show. Uh, and so this is very interesting. They've kind of simplified this. Uh, to just uh, three image uh, sizes. So now uh, there's a kind of, rather than having advertisers come up with 50 variations of uh, of an image ad, which was kind of ridiculous, uh, now they're saying, can you come up with three? And they have got this new technology that's going to kind of resize the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, image to, to fit in all those other 50 formats. And the resizing isn't just a matter of squishing the image. It's it's actually very clever. It's like uh, it can detect text and stuff on, on your on your um, on your image ad and move the text around so that it doesn't like you know clash with certain colors or, or, or that it doesn't run off the side of the, the, the ad or whatever or they'll wrap text to make it fit. Uh, so it's it's almost like having a little Photoshop editor guy go in and, and editing editing your ads to to, um, to, to, to fit the different uh, screen resolutions. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, beyond the that that uh, change on the Google Display Network, uh, they also did a lot of uh, new features and functions related to, to keyword bidding. So uh, this one that you're looking here, uh, it's, it's a new uh, target CPA bid simulator tool. Uh, so what the heck is this? Well, as you know, the higher your cost target cost per conversion, uh, the more clicks and impressions you'll be eligible for. And, and conversely, if you set a very, very low target uh, cost per action uh, uh, target, uh, then you'll, you'll receive uh, fewer clicks and fewer conversions, though at a lower cost. And so what the simulator does here is it, it just basically answers the questions, how much more conversions would I get if I increased my target cost per action? I think that's a valid question, and now uh, now you can figure it out. Um, additionally, there's uh, these new kind of they're calling these enhanced bid strategy dashboards, uh, and and basically these help you figure out whether or not the bid strategy that you're employing is en enabling you to meet the goals that you have or not. Uh, and so both of these tools uh, are not yet available currently, but they expect to have them out uh, in in the next year or so. So. Overall, uh, kind of a nice, kind of a you know, nice um, kind of package of new tools to automate repetitive tasks using you know, dynamic search ads, automated bidding, and auto resizing of uh, of display ads. This brings us to the last category of, of new ca of new tools and functionality that was announced this week, which has to do with new tools to measure the impact of these mobile ads. So. Um, uh, what they're telling us is that nine out of ten smartphone users they start the task uh, on one device, as as you can see in this picture, he, uh, he's doing something on the phone, uh, but they then finish it on another device. And it's not just a matter of um, kind of switching from the the mobile browser to the to the um, desktop browser. Or, um, they also switch back and forth between apps uh, and the web. And so uh, you know if you're trying to buy something, um, you know. And then you're keeping, you keep switching back and forth between, you know, one device to another device, and then and an app to the web. Uh, it, it, you can imagine it's going to make it very difficult to, for for marketers like yourself to to really understand the value of all these clicks that you're paying for. And so, uh, what's new is is this notion of uh, cross device conversion tracking, uh, and, and it's going to be extended to new conversion types, including in app, uh, in store, and and, and, and phone conversions. Uh, uh, so, so this will allow us to then measure conversions that, that start on the web or end in, an, in your app or vice versa. Um, uh, another uh, big thing that came up was uh, this notion of attribution. So uh, I don't know if, if people are using attribution models, but I can I tell you a little bit about what, what, what this is all about. It's basically the process of assigning value to different touch points within the customer journey that led to a purchase. So like suppose uh, a, a prospective customer did, did a search for great tech gifts, uh, then clicked on an ad, then they th later on, like the next day, then searched on highly rated tablets, uh, and then an hour later, you know, then they searched on a Nexus 9 tablet. So like if they click on the ad, points within this customer journey. Uh, you know, how much did each keyword contribute to that purchase decision? And so, uh, you know, what's new here is that um, they have all these new apps. So this is a little bit complicated, uh, but basically, um, 
you're most likely, 99% of you are, are doing something called keywords like highly rated tablets and Nexus 9 tablet. But uh, what do you do with all this information? Like, like if uh, if a keyword contributed, you know, 0.5 of the conversion or 0.3 or whatever it is, I mean, it's it's not just about having insights. You need to be able to act on these insights and take this 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 uh, this attribution data and apply it to your your strategies. And so uh, the way that you do this now is if you go into sort of the conversions settings page in AdWords, you can um, kind of where it says. Uh, optimization and attribution, you can select which attribution model you would like to use, uh, like for the conversion columns in, in your AdWords account, you can have it calculated differently depending on which uh, uh, which methodology you, you choose, and then just click apply, and then it'll then show you the conversions uh, you know, as uh, using the weightings according to, to the model that you've chosen. So I think that's really interesting, um, also very confusing. Which brings us to sort of my last key takeaway. So that's so far a summary of all of the new features and functions uh, that, that that were were discussed this week. I just want to take a minute to, to kind of discuss the significance of all this new stuff. What does it all mean? Um, well, if you've paid, paid any attention at all to, to any of these slides today, um, you you would have known that everything here has to do with you know, more searches on mobile than desktop. Um, you know. It just takes a little bit of time for them to adopt mobile ad strategies and mobile attribution strategies uh, and call tracking and all this stuff. Um, but uh, let me just reiterate, uh, the the marketers and advertisers who do take advantage of, of, of optimizing their ad campaigns for mobile will um, benefit tremendously and it will largely come at the expense of those who do not. Uh, the, the only other really broad takeaway I had here was that AdWords is getting increasingly complicated. Guys, I was there for two days kind of listening to sessions um, from over 20 different AdWords product managers and guys, it's my full-time job here to kind of learn about AdWords and kind of help pe keep people up to date on, on all the new tools and technologies and I got to admit I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all the new stuff and um, uh, even there were a bunch of existing things that I didn't even know about. So it's like, holy cow! It's like my my whole job is to to, to learn about all these things. And then there were, you know, it was very overwhelming in terms of the the, the details and granularity of all the targeting options, um, which you know leads me to believe that. Um, you know, if, if I'm feeling this way, then maybe small businesses might feel it this way even more. And so, kind of underscoring the importance of, of partnering with, uh, you know, trusted agencies like WordStream, etc. Um, okay, guys, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about call tracking. So, um, so everything that Google was talking about uh, this week was about mobile, and one of the most important things that that you as an advertiser can do, uh, just like uh, in terms of under like outfitting your campaigns uh, to be mobile friendly or to, to, is to do the, this no, notion of call tracking. So that's the ability to understand the value of all these calls that are being generated by mobile search. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of uh, describe uh, this this product offering from WordStream. WordStream, of course, offers uh, two, uh, two types of call tracking. Um, uh, first of all, if people search on a Google search, like for you know plumber or something like this, and they click on that click to call button, uh, that's called a, they're calling directly from the call extension. Uh, what WordStream can do is we can provision uh, call tracking numbers that still go to your business, but they redirect to a, a tracking number and then then redirect back to uh, to your business, and that way we can kind of keep track of, um, you know, uh, you know these calls from from your ad campaigns that you're paying for. The other uh, type of call tracking has to do with the phone number on your website. So a lot of times people they'll just rather than clicking on that call button, they'll navigate to your site, uh, and they'll um, kind of navigate your website. And they'll click on the uh, the they'll they'll just call the phone number that's listed on on the top of your website, and so uh, what we can do there is we have the software that'll kind of rewrite that number 
uh, into a, a trackable number that then forwards to your main number. That way we can kind of attribute uh, that call as a call that originated from, from, from search. Uh, and so um, in, in WordStream, it's super, super easy to do this call tracking uh, from either the call extension or your website. It's just a very simple process uh, using the, the uh, here's one of the setup screens. You just set up WordStream call tracking. Uh, and, and one of the uh, one of the key advantages of, of using this technology is one, you can kind of attribute what keyword searches led to uh, what calls. Uh, and the second um, really, really major uh, advantage of the software has to do with the ability to tr track and record those calls. So, uh, I mean, just because you get a phone call doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's necessarily valuable. Uh, but, but you know, what what the software does is it's going to say, um, you know, this call this call can be re recorded for quality assurance purposes, which means we're recording it, uh, and then uh, it it it'll then allow you to then listen in on the calls that got generated, allowing you to kind of make a de determination on whether or not these are valuable or not based on the conversations uh, that are happening are, are people looking to place orders or not uh, and and um, and that's like one of the key things that you need to know uh, in order to to optimize your mobile campaigns and, and I'm, I hope you'll you'll take us up on on, uh, on an offer later to, to learn more about this all right so that's all I had today uh, for my, my presentation in terms of the the, the content here uh, Chris do we have a, a an offer here that you can tell our listeners about Sure. Um, we have uh, two special offers today, and um, we have a free live demo of WordStream software, and that's WordStream Advisor, or we have a one-on-one -on -one AdWords assessment. So um, our paid search experts here will actually walk you through um, your AdWords performance grader. That's what the one-on-one -on -one AdWords assessment is. And the live demo of our software is um, a free um, seven-day trial. Um, you can use everything in the software, but actually post your changes. Um, but you'll get a one-on-one -on -one, um, with our paid search expert here, and they'll um, walk you through your account and see how the software could help you. Um, so the third option there is I don't need any help with my PPC. So we hope you don't pick that last one. <laughs> um, so we'll leave uh, the special offers up on the screen right now. And uh, Larry, you want to um, hop right into questions? Sure, guys. If you have any questions, just type them in to the bottom of your screen. I'll do my best here um, to answer them. Larry, we have tons of questions. I actually think we broke the question box. They're coming in. <laughs> They're coming in so uh, frequently here. Um, so let's let's hop right into it. Um, so Lindsay asks, is there a date in May where these changes will happen, or are these um, different formats already available? Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, it's it's different for each of the formats. So like, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of the presentation, uh, some of them are available right away. Others will be uh, are, are uh, available in beta currently, and others will be rolled out over the next 12 months. Uh, so like, if, if there was a specific one that you had in mind, I can I could give you the dates, but I don't think it makes sense for me to uh, to enumerate every one right now. Um, Okay, and uh, so Ruth asks, do you consider tablet a mobile device? Um, Google doesn't for search purposes. Uh, no, so I, yes, uh, the, the, I kind of agree with Google. Uh, I kind of view it as just a, a replacement for desktop search. Uh, it's not identically equal to, to desktop search, um, but, uh, but it, it's, it's closer. A, a tablet is much more like a desktop than it is a mobile device in that you, you're not using your tablet when you're like out and about in the car or, or like in the bus, you know, you're, you're not, like most most of the people who buy these tablets don't buy the the, um, the data plans with them, you know, so, so I kind of view them as, as uh, more like a desktop. Okay. Um, so our next, next question here is from Dave. He asks, um, with dynamic search ads, if Google builds the keyword string from your page, does that mean quality score will naturally be higher? You know, I would imagine that they would not show. I mean, you're give, with dynamic search ads, you're giving the keys to, to Google, like uh, the car keys to Google. They're they're doing everything. They're picking the keywords, they're writing the ads, they're picking the destination uh, URLs. So, um, you know, I would imagine that they would only want to do this with you know high quality, you know keywords and, 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 and landing page combos. Uh, and so I would expect them to, to do an above average job of doing that. I, otherwise, like, um, you know, uh, 
<laughs> like it's it's like a bug. Uh, so so yeah, I, I think I, I think they could um, they could result in higher quality scores and potentially lower uh, lower cost per clicks. Uh, but uh, again, it's it's pretty early days. I don't have a ton of research on this just just yet. And Larry, is the is the new release? Is it for international, or is it going to be for U.S. only to start? Uh, for dynamic search ads, is actually a, a global release of this is is planned uh, for for later this year. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh, Harry asks, does ad resizing um, work for animated gifs? Um. So. Uh, that one I'm not 100 percent sure of. <laughs> I, I was actually not aware that you could use animated. Uh, so, so here's what I can tell you. Um, so there's so animated uh, image ads generally do better than than non-animated uh, static images, and um, there, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, Flash is one of them, uh, and and, and um, uh, they, they, did, they did mention that there's like new tools there to, to automatically convert flash ads into HTML5 ads, and thus uh, the, the, those flash ads would, would then work on on uh, you know any mobile device and stuff like this uh, because because it's HTML5. Um, they didn't mention anything about the, the animated gifs though, so I'm I'm sorry I don't have information on that. Okay, um, so we're actually getting some questions in about the the demo for WordStream Advisor. So um, they're asking if that's different from um, the 20 minute PPC work week. So the the 20 minute PPC work week is actually part of our software WordStream Advisor. So you'll get that included with the software. Also, um, people are asking if um, call tracking is also included, and um, that's also within the WordStream platform. Um, there's uh, prices range depending on how many clicks you get per month, um, but I believe that to start it's up to is it three thousand clicks, Larry? Yeah, that's free for right. call tracking. Okay, the, like the vast majority of our customers, it's 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 free. Yep, yep. Um, okay, so the next question here is um, obviously Google's really focused on on mobile, um, but what about companies where mobile's not an appropriate platform for their customers. So this particular um, person, 80% of their customers, they get um, they get their customers, uh, 80% of their customers come through desktop search. Um, so what is what are the, the benefit for them for this new release? Well, I, I think uh, dynamic search ads definitely applies uh, to the desktop search. Like, I mean, wouldn't you want to have more keyword coverage for the for the desktop pages that you're that that you're trying to promote uh, relating to your business? I think uh, the 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 Google Display ad re, re, re um, resizing uh, capability definitely applies to 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 your business because uh, you know if you're doing remarketing, um, I, I would imagine you'd want to have more exposure rather than less exposure, and so uh, you now you don't have to to create uh, uh, 50 ad formats. Uh, you can just create three. Uh, so I think there's a good amount of stuff. Uh, for 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 people who who aren't uh, crazy about mobile, although um, I would just add, um, you know, if you're eighty percent of your your traffic is 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 coming from 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 um, desktop and twenty from mobile, uh, I would just look look um, maybe a year or two back and and try to see like okay, so that twenty percent from mobile, what was it last year? Was it ten percent? You know, and if if it was ten percent last year and it's twenty percent this year, that means it's you know maybe it's going to be thirty percent next year. So it's like um, you just kind of that that could become more significant, you know, sooner than you think. Okay, great, Larry. Um, so Zach asks, are there location extensions something you manage within um, the shopping feed? Is that in the Merchant Center or is that within just AdWords itself? Uh, the location extensions are done in, in the extensions tab within AdWords. Okay. Um, okay, next question here is, um, does that 15% of um, the new searches that happen every day does that include um, like typos that come in so someone that's you know writing um, you know they're writing a, a search query and they don't they don't spell something correctly does, is that included in the data of, of course it is yes uh, the, the, that that's a big source of 
of keywords, and uh, it's like just it's really impossible to 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 anticipate all the different ways that people are searching for, for things that uh, for, for for your products and services, and so that's why I think uh, this dynamic search ads is is kind of a, a really interesting uh, solution rather than having to have advertisers to think up all the different misspellings and variations, etc. Uh, just just have Google do use its magical powers to figure it out for you, you know. Okay. Um, so the next question we have here, um, Alex asks, did the new AdWords release also include changes in the relationship between the number of AdWords listings versus organic listings? Well, um, I don't know about the number of ads, but these new mobile ad formats certainly seem to be much more prominent. Uh, so, so it's possible that they still have like you know two ads, uh, mobile ads uh, in a search results page, but these they just really seem to you know, take up most of the space there, and so, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's gonna kind of soak up more clicks towards the ads than, than from the for, for, to, than, rather than the organic results. Uh, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Larry, can you tell us what is the best way to convince your boss to spend money on AdWords? Well, if anything, it, this should be the easiest channel to uh, to convince people to, do, to to try because it's so so measurable I mean it's not like you're buying a billboard ad where it's like impossible to know what happened uh, you know uh, this is you know you can you can exactly measure you know the clicks the um, you know conversions etc uh, that you get from from the money you spend and so I would just turn this in for in, in, this question into more of a why not question like uh, you know like why why wouldn't we spend you know five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars to try this out and then just find out what happens um, and, you know it's kind of hard to, to to disagree with with something like that okay um, so I'm scanning through the questions here, Larry, and it looks like a lot of the, uh, the questions are similar. Um, so I think we can wrap up here um, with one more question. If we didn't get to your question, definitely take us up on the, the offer, the, the, the live demo or the one-on-one -on -one assessment, um, and we can, we can answer all your questions that you have and also give you a preview of the software. Um, so let's end with this question here, Larry. Um, did Google indicate a ratio of smartphones to tablets being used for search? Uh, well, uh, so so f f more than fifty percent of the searches are mobile, so that's we'll, we'll just we'll say fifty percent mobile. The rest the rest is tablet and desktop. I, I don't have the exact numbers for that, but there's there's you know there's there are places where you can look that up. Uh, you know, in terms of like you know what's the the, the, the number of desktops and what's the number of, of, of um, tablets that exist in the world, and maybe you could model it off of that. I, I don't have the information off the top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Well, thank you, Larry, and thank you, thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, we are actually going to send a link out after the webinar with a link to the recording and the the slides. So, you know, if we went too fast, or if you just want to, um, you know, view this again on demand, you can definitely check that out. We'll be sending that later today or or um, tomorrow. Oh, um, okay. And Larry, and Chris, you want to, Chris, Chris, just for for that last question on on the on tablets, yeah. you can you can f see how many clicks and impressions uh, in your AdWords accounts came from you know tablets versus uh, mobile devices versus desktop. That's just like a segmentation uh, in in the dimensions tab. So you should be able to answer that you know perfectly for for your campaigns. Perfect. Uh, All right, Larry, so, do you want to close out the webinar here? Yeah. Uh, can we just advance? Uh, can I? Uh, Close the poll. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's it. That's it. Okay. So thanks everyone uh, for joining us. Uh, it's exciting new stuff. Uh, you know, hope we can help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today.